Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with an extremely adaptable golem deck that has multiple ways of dealing decisive blows to foes. You can win the standard way of cycling elixir collectors in single elixir until you can afford a big golem push of doom. Using golem plus night witch to build up a massive menacing push and evolve zap plus tornado and baby dragon to melt firecrackers and annoying range cards. Capitalize on overcommitments by your opponent by springing together offense with a skeleton king, night witch, and baby dragon. When the night witch bats fall, it springs your skeleton king ability to the next level, enabling a fearsome offense that can tear down entire towers. And Tornado allows you to snipe cards that the opponent's relying on for defense. And with Skeleton King ability and the Tornado, you can keep your opponent's units at a standstill. So they stay in front of the tower and the Evolved Bomber damage skyrockets. The ranked 26th player in the world is reducing top ladder to rubble with this Golem deck. If you only have one evolution, use the Evolved Bomber. But the Evolved Zap is great to use in the deck too. It's time to adapt and overcome any deck that Clash Royale throws at us to achieve fast wins and assert dominance. And a big baby dragon blast of love to everyone that's supporting the channel with Critter Code Sir Tag. The Mad King. He's about to get a little bit more furious when he realizes what he's playing into. Golem is not a deck that most people are looking at and loving. So we're gonna go Golem whenever we can when we're up Elixir. Generally in single Elixir, it's a horrible strategy unless you can identify that your opponent might have a Lava Hound deck or something without Goblin Drill. I mean, a lot of times the opponent will have Goblin Drill, but I saw a Lava Hub in the clan. And I was like, there's no way. There's no way this isn't Lava Hound. So we were right. And we ended up making a very aggressive decision, but... It worked out in our favor. I'm going to go in for a Skeleton Dragon's counter, probably, if he decides to drop that. If we can go for, like, a Zap and then Baby Dragon, maybe. I don't know. Oh, he's going to have Inferno Dragon. This is way better for us. This is so much better for us. I think the Skeleton King is able to get a Sublime ability off right now. And then we're going to force an Arrows, most likely. And then when the Arrows comes down, it doesn't even kill all the Skeletons. And obviously, the Night Witch Bats are still going to spawn. And that is so much damage. <laughs> Our stupid strategy of looking at his clan name paid off dividends. And we devoured almost the entire tower. If you guys think I'm stupid, you're right. But it's also a surprisingly successful strategy being stupid out here. Also, we're going to go for the bomber. And we're going to go and pull back the Inferno Dragon. And then I think I can activate King Tower with the Tornado against the Balloon. And then I can go zap on top of the Inferno Dragon so it doesn't ruin our day. So I believe that we're going to be fine here. I don't know if it's 100% foolproof strat. Oh, no, no, no. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Pretty solid. We ended up somehow salvaging our tower in the left-hand side, despite him going in for a Balloon Inferno Dragon, when all we had was Tornado and Zap. That worked out really well, all things considered. So he's probably not very happy, because we went all in, and we risked it for the biscuit, and we devoured the tower. So, you know, we, we took a big bite of his biscuit there. I'm going to go in for a Night Witch in the back, just to spawn a lot of bats here, and then Skeleton Dragons are coming down as anticipated. I thought he would drop those earlier, but he didn't, which was interesting. But now we can use our Tornado on defense against that if we need to, which I don't think I want to, because if we don't have to, i rather prefer to save the Tornado for the defense against the Balloon. Because he could obviously Balloon in the other side. Skeleton King is going to go and soak up the majority of the damage here. I can just do whatever I want on that side on the left. It's going to die. I mean, even a Skeleton King ability or the Skeleton King itself. I mean, either one of those work. Pretty solid stuff because we're able to go for a Golem and all-in on the right-hand side. As long as he doesn't 3-crown me right now. As long as this man doesn't have a random balloon freeze deck, then we're fine. Which I, I, I highly doubt. I highly, highly doubt that he would ever be playing that. So we're going to Baby Dragon in the middle, have both the towers, being able to focus that down. Then we're going to go for a Zap here, and then I want to go for Evo Bomber and click the ability of the Skeleton King so we can keep the Evo Bomber alive a little bit longer. Just because we saw him already drop his small spells, I don't think he has a good answer for this Evo Bomber. Wait, if I Tornado, the Evo Bomber is still alive and we force out another Arrows. This is absurd. The Inferno Dragon plus Evo Barbs are phenomenal answers to our Golem, but because we have built a strategy of spamming as much as we possibly can, it's working out in our favor. Of course, I'm going to Evo Zap here so we can reset the Inferno Dragon and be an ever-present nuisance with our problems throwing him back at our opponent. And then I could click the Skeleton King ability. I think that that might have been the better play. But if we Golem in the middle, that might be the best play possible. The Bomber's tanking for the Golem and the Night Witch. If the Night Witch bats are able to spawn, this guy is just destroyed. He's destined for doom. And I think there's going to be a little bit more gloom when we go for a Zap and a Tornado so the Baby Dragon hits the tower too. That was one of the luckiest games I've had in my life, and it's the best way to start the day. When you win the game that you don't necessarily deserve because you look at your opponent's clan and you're like, I'm feeling like I should go all in right about now. You know you should get punished in perpetuity for that horrendous play, but it paid off in the most miraculous way. After fully engaging our no-skill strategy and that lucky win against Lava Hound, we've pushed up to 5,800 in the world. Yo, we're playing against someone with an Ice Golem in the banner, but I hate to see someone not playing an Ice Golem in their deck when they got him in the banner, because then I can't use my creative strategy of deciphering the deck immediately. Well, I guess it's just going to show me that we're matching into another Lava Hound legend. 
It's weird to play against two of these guys in a row, but hey, it happens, I guess. This time, I think we might have to adapt our strategy a little bit and go into him. So I'm going to go in for the Night Witch in the back to start building up a huge amount of bats. But I do think that it's going to be slightly problematic since I don't have a good answer to this Inferno Dragon. So I am likely going to be screwed unless we can get a really, really good zap off on this. Wait, we can Tornado on the Miner. And then we can go for a zap, as we said. Like, this is generally the best bet. Resetting the Inferno Dragon. Tornadoing the Miner off the Elixir Collector is something that most people don't even know. If you do that placement that I did, you're able to clean up any Miners every single time and activate King Tower in a situation where you would expect that Miner to be safe against the Elixir Collector. So, if there was anything that was new for you guys to learn, that is one of the biggest things to put into your memory bank. Because you'll be able to delete all the Miner Poison decks, all the annoying Lava Hound Miner decks like this one, and still get an Elixir Advantage from the Elixir Collector. So, I like doing that. We're just going to drop our Elixir Collector again in the back left, so then if he has a spell, I don't want him to be able to hit the Baby Dragon and the Elixir Collector and the right-hand tower. I'd much rather have him pick between spelling the Elixir Collector or spelling our tower. So, which one is he going to pick? The world has no clue. We have no idea what this dude's going to do. I do know that I have to go Skeleton King and then reset everything with the Zap so I don't lose the game. I do have Tornado too, so I should be fine. If we can just get a really good NATO, that would be exquisite. If we can NATO on the Skeleton Dragons, that's what we need. And it works. Huge value. And then we can Night Witch in front. He's going to lose the Miner. He is down so much Elixir right now. That is what we like to see. That is a really good gameplay on our end. And I think that's actually deserved defense. We went from the epitome of low skill in the last game to showcasing why this deck is capable of making outplays. Imagine a Golem deck actually rewarding good gameplay instead of just Golming in the back and praying. This, is, this deck is, can do both. It's, it's pretty cool to see that. So we're going to go Golem in the back right now, directly into that, and because we've got Evolve Zap, I'm not that frightened by the Inferno Dragon. Typically, the frightening of the Inferno Dragon is going to be a recipe for disaster, and you just lose, but it's a little bit different here with Evo Zap. You got three little Zappies. So we're going to Zap on top of the Skeleton Dragons as well. I do think that's going to be well worth it. And then we can pop through with another Golem. <laughs> this is astoundingly stupid. This is the, case, the way that we're going to play, but... That's what we're going to do today, especially if he goes in for arrows. Then we go and drop our Evo Bomber. We can pop the ability of the Skeleton King as well. And then I don't think he's going to be able to defend this. This is way too much crap coming at him. Like, how are you supposed to stop a full HP Golem on your tower? We literally had two of them in the map at the same time. Because guess what? You're able to do that when you get Elixir Collectors. It's beyond unfair. So, of course, you already know. We got it. We got to do it. We got to do it for the memes at this point. Golem at the bridge, baby! So, it's... Not necessarily the smartest decision, but you can get away with it when you're up this amount of elixir. You are allowed to embrace the meme factor of Clash Royale to just terrorize your opponent in a different way. So, he's dead. GG. Well played, brother. And it's awesome to beat Lava Hound down and pop their balloons every time we match into them. And after stealing Lava Hound's wins and wings, we've flown up to 4,900 in the world. Yo, we're popping into a game against El Pokerin. I really thought his name was Pokemon. And yes, guys, it's because I love Pokemon. I try to put it into every single joke, every single meme on my YouTube videos. Pokemon is an ever-present theme. <laughs> uh, I played LC, if you guys know what Pokemon Showdown is, and Little Cup, and I got rank one on the ladder before. So that was my biggest accomplishment in Pokemon. And then I was like, you know what? I don't really want to play it competitively anymore. But yeah, let me know if you guys ever played Pokemon growing up, because generally one of the best games and one of the most nostalgic things that I've ever played. So this guy is going to be going in for Executioner and Valkyrie, so I bet it's either going to be a Balloon deck or it's going to be some type of aggressive deck with Graveyard. I, I just don't know. So anyway, either way, it's going to be fine for us to apply pressure right now because thinking about it from the perspective of Graveyard, he will get countered by Skeleton King. If it's going to be a Balloon deck, he doesn't have his Executioner in hand, so I really want to punish him when he doesn't have the right cards to counter us on offense. So we got to do it. We got to go in for the win. Why do you have Executioner with a Tesla and a P.E.K.K.A. against Golem? This is horrendous for me. Unless the Bomber can just win us the game. I mean, maybe. Is this, is this, is this really how we're going to win? Is this the game? Is this a single two elixir evolution after it gets a nerf? Like, this card was even better than it is right now. And it did 2,000 damage to the tower. Through a defense that should be practically impenetrable. So, that's cool. We take that. I, I'm an enjoyer of this interaction. Obviously, the guy is going to go in for an Executioner. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to be stupid. I'm not going to go in for any aggression with the Skeleton King. Skeleton King is going to get sent to the Shadow Realm all by himself. What? There's no way you just dropped a Tesla. You remember what happened to you last time, right? 
<laughs> maybe he doesn't. I, I I don't know. Maybe maybe he just doesn't know. If we go in for a Night Witch, we can go Golem. I mean, we might be able to get some damage here. I have no idea. I think we can mess up the orientation of the Executioner and win the game. Hopefully, that will work out in our favor. Like, I'm really hoping that the Executioner hits off to the side and doesn't hit the Night Witch. And then maybe we're okay. Who knows? It's going to be NATO'd. Okay, never mind. That did not happen at all. That did not happen at all. Scratch my decision making. That was awful. All right. Well, we can activate King Tower with the Tornado against his uh, aggressive Hog Rider that should be coming down. He's literally going to Lightning on me. Oh, he has no chill. He has absolutely no chill. He has absolutely no chill. This is horrible. I lost. I lost. I lost. No. Guys, it was so good until it wasn't. And now with 17 seconds remaining, I'm not winning. Sometimes you will match into a random Executioner P.E.K.K.A. Tesla deck. And that is one of the worst matchups imaginable. I was actually able to get a lot of damage early on, but it wasn't enough to win the match. And sometimes when you're playing destructive golem decks like ours, you're not going to be able to break through every defense. The big benefit of playing skillless decks like this is it allows you to win quick wins so you offset any losses. And you recover all the medals that you lose really fast. And I'm not going to lie, it was actually hilarious to see us be able to break through that type of defense and deal 2,000 damage. Showing that even in the face of the hardest counters in the game, there's a way to get damage and a chance to win. Yo, this guy's going to have a Lumberjack in his banner. So he's going to chop down some trees and we're going to send him down to his knees. Obviously, if we can go in for the Bomber in the back, cycle into the Evolution, that is going to be the best play that we can do. Generally, we're trying to spam to our Elixir Collector and cycle in the Bomber and the Zap are the best vehicles to get there since they are spamming a lot of evolutions at all points in time. And uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to go wrong when you get evolutions on the field. You will generally get positive extra trades. This guy is going to have a Skeleton King and a Night Witch as well. So he might be a Sinister Sir. He might be a Sly Elixir Golem player. Or he could be possibly pulling through with the same strategy as us. Nah, he doesn't have it. He's going to have Elixir Golem. Yeah, it's going to have to be an Elixir Golem deck. We're going to zap so we can keep our Baby Drone alive, please. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't even know how I said Baby Dragon alive. I think I was really stuttering and stammering because I did not want my stuff to get stomped. And I was like, well, if that dies, I'm just kind of sad. I don't even want to manifest it right now because every single time that something I say, I think is going to happen and it just never happens. All right, wait, we can Tornado here and then I think we can go in for a Zapparino. This is generally going to be decent because we are able to cycle that and then go and cycle a Bomber as well to get the evolution. Looking pretty nice. So it is an Elixir Golem strategy. This guy is uh, playing one of the most toxic decks in the game. I'm faced with an opportunity to go in for the Skeleton King and then another Elixir Collector, or I could have went in for a Golem. I actually think cycling the Golem would have been better. The reason is, he's going to Elixir Collector. He would have not been in the position to play aggressive. And this Skeleton King by itself is going to wander out in the wilderness and do nothing. So definitely a bad decision on my end, if I had to be honest with y'all. It is what it is. It be how it be, and we're going to have to live with our own decisions out here. <laughs> Bomber, I choose you, please. All right, well, we can NATO this, and I think that's going to be our best bet. We do have Evo Zap for the left-hand side, and there's going to be a lot of Elixir spent by our opponent. Rather wasted, in my opinion. So can we lay waste to him with another Elixir Collector in the middle? This is hilarious. He lost the Skeleton King. He learned from us. He understand the mission. He understood the mission of playing poorly. Wait, did I activate King Tower with the Evolve Zap? Oh, my gosh. Dude, I'm actually an idiot. I'm actually stupid, and I'm leaking so much Elixir, too. I was looking at the King Tower activation and I was mystified and stunned by my own zap. All right, it's okay, it's okay. We are built to win this one. We lost against someone with Golem and counters with Executioner and Pekka and also a Tesla. So we have to win this one, right? It's just, it, it needs to happen. We have to fulfill the Ws. We need to bounce back, all right? Also, <laughs> it's just, it's excruciatingly painful losing to anyone that's running this type of deck with Elixir Golem. So losing this game would make me a sad sir and I, I can't mentally have that. The resilience with our mental only is able to bounce back so much. If you lose two games and one of them is against Elixir Golem, I just take a small break and I come back to recording a little bit later. But, you know, luckily we win this. So we'll walk away with W and we'll bounce on to the next one and we'll keep climbing up the leaderboard. GG, well played and, you know, it's nice to see our medals back in business. After that rather easy win against Elixir Golem, we've rebounded up the ranks to 4,400 in the world. All right, let's keep climbing. Guys, we got to get that 4-1 pristine record right now. And another Elixir Golem player has entered into the chat. Wow, we doubled up on Lawbound and we're doubling up on Elixir Golem too. I wonder if Clash Trial is trying to tell me something today. They're like, Jake, you must win against the exact same deck every time. Challenge accepted game, all right? So I think we can go in for a zap and this might be the same play for us. If we're just able to senselessly slaughter all of his stuff, 
I don't know how he's going to defend this. How are you supposed to defend this right now? Can we do both? Can we go defense and offense at the same time, my guy? Oh, he's going to rocket me. I'm so glad I didn't spend more elixir. Wait, wait, there's no way. There's no way. He is still struggling to defend while we went elixir collector in his face. How does it feel to get disrespected to this degree, my dude? Sniper, you are getting sniped right now by the Evo Bomber, and I feel like we are sniping away at his sanity. We are snipping like a barber and cutting each piece of his mental right out of the game. It is hilarious to watch Elixir Golem players mentally decay because I feel like if you play this deck enough, you're already going to have brain rot, but when you're losing, you're going to lose your mind. So <laughs> I feel like we're in a very good position. And if you guys like playing Elixir Golem, this is definitely a better deck than any Elixir Golem deck right now. Because you're able to kind of have defense with the Tornado while also having the skillless offense that you guys are seeing from us. And as you see, this game is already utterly over. And we steamrolled him. This, this wasn't even close. Hey, he's going to rocket the King Tower. <laughs> you know, Elixir Golem is infamous for making people rage quit. So it's nice that the script is flipped. And this is definitely deserved. If someone plays Elixir Golem, they shouldn't be winning a lot of their matches. And it's cool that we have a superb amount of splash damage with the Baby Dragon, the Bomber, the Skeleton King, and Tornado. So you have that safety net. If someone's spamming you like an insane sir, you're going to shut them down and give them a sense of reality. Finally, helping them realize that their low-skill bridge spam at the river shouldn't be dominating Clash Royale. Only our low-skill bridge spam can reign supreme as the ultimate meme. Even though we got one loss, we've rushed up the ranks surprisingly fast to 3,700 in the world. And we've even got enough time for another game. Yo, the guy's got the sword in the banner and he's from Phoenix. Maybe he's from Arizona or maybe he just likes the Phoenix card in Clash. Won't be able to ask him, unfortunately, because there's no voice chat in Clash Royale. I think that would be like the worst, most toxic thing that they could ever add in the game. Yeah, boy! Also, I elected to not tornado that because I feel like I might be able to go in for an aggressive golem. Rebounding to the first game of the day where I went all in like a psycho. And I'm going to do it again. So this is going to work really well because he's going to have Elite Barbarians as his best defense. No! Wait, wait, wait. Retargeting the Baby Dragon. Baby Dragon, don't be stupid. Go on to the Mother Witch. You have one job. Oh my gosh. If we zap, we can kill the E-Barb and then have the Bat lock under the tower? This is hilarious. That Bat baited out a whole horde of Bats. It was like a summoning circle of Bats, if you will. And now we're up a lot. I, I like it. No Phoenix from our opponent and no Resurrection from him. So we're looking like this is pretty spicy, but solid spot for us. I might be able to go for an Elixir Collector in the back, but I also don't really know if this guy is going to go and spam some ridiculous maneuver. And he goes in for a drill, which isn't that bad for us because we can easily counter it with the Skeleton King. However, when he decides to do that, it's a little bit of a different story. We definitely do want to go in for the Evo Bomber because it should be able to splash onto his stuff without too many worries. Guy's going to go for a log, but I believe in the power of the Bomber. Oh, Bomber. Why'd you do that to me? You had one job. You got beat. You didn't have the buzzer beater. You got a taste of defeat, my dude. All right, please. Yeah. All right. All right. If we cycle Baby Dragon here, we can get to another Elixir Collector, so that's worth it. And then we can definitely Tornado on the Mother Witch. And this will be able to surprise our opponent because he's not expecting that at all. If we literally take his tower with a Night Witch Baby Dragon, that is definitely one of the dumbest pushes I've done in my life. There's no way the creativity that you can come up with with this deck because you've got Tornado to pull in cards that they should be able to defend with is hilarious. And I know I'm going to lose the tower on the left, but... I think that we can make this right if we go in for everything in our might in the right-hand side. Definitely want to go for a zap so we don't get bamboozled by the evolution, but wait, there's no way. Can we run it back again? I really want to do it. I really want to do it for the memes. Mother Witch is coming down, and we're going to make him frown. We're going to pop the ability. I don't know if he has the ability to defend this. There's no way, dude. Look at the Skeleton King swarming you. We don't even need a golem. This is just eventual overcoming anything with spam. And even though he's going to have the Evolve Zap, we got it as well. And I think we're to put you in the place. Just three crowning you like an absolute disgrace. As you guys can see, we didn't even drop our Golem and we dropped all three of his crowns. So if you play this deck defensively, cycling Elixir Collectors, you'll create opportunities just by playing passive. Opening up an abundance of offensive doors so you can charge through and stomp your opponent's towers like a doormat. Rock the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe for more daily content and have an amazing rest of your day.